being sick are being rounded up, with multiple unverified videos showing the quarantine squads at work. It's all adding to a growing sense of disbelief and dread. I don't want to be taken away like that, a child can be heard saying. But now the fear is turning to anger. Dr. Li Wenliang was one of the first to report signs of the new strange virus. But his online posts were censored and the police made him sign this confession, along with seven others, for spreading rumours. His death from the virus in this Wuhan hospital has prompted an outpouring on social media. The hashtag, I want freedom of speech, viewed almost two million times before being blocked. Dr. Li was the first whistleblower, but no one cared, this man tells me. Are you angry? Yes, a bit, she says, but more hopeless. If they'd listened to him, the situation would be better now. On a Beijing riverbank, we find a tribute to the doctor. Goodbye, Li Wenliang, it says. There can be no doubting just how sensitive a moment this now is for China's ruling Communist Party. The already simmering concern about the mishandling of the crisis exploding into a public wave of anger and grief. In the death of a doctor, the systemic failings have been laid bare. The response, though, is likely to be more censorship. These videos of Wuhan's hospitals, the conditions inside, and the people queuing for masks were taken by a blogger, Chan Chou Shu. I spoke to him earlier this week. What's your thoughts about how long you will be able to continue providing independent reporting from Wuhan? I'm not sure, he says. The censorship's so strict, people's accounts are being closed down if they share my content. His family say he's now disappeared. In this public health disaster, there are real political risks, and the orders are already being sent out. Maintain stability, tighten control. John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing. A British man on his honeymoon is among more than 60 people who've tested positive for the virus on board a cruise ship in Japan. Alan Steele, who's 58 and from Wolverhampton, has been taken to a nearby hospital for treatment. Of the 3,700 people on board the Diamond Princess, it's thought there are around 80 Britons with the ship quarantined in Yokohama. All the passengers have been confined to their cabins for the next fortnight. Here's our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh. Some passengers have called it a floating prison. Three days into the two-week quarantine off Japan, passengers are being allowed to exercise on deck wearing face masks. But dozens on the Diamond Princess have been removed to hospital for treatment. Among them, Alan Steele on his honeymoon. He's among nearly 80 British people on board. 41 additional passengers uh, being found positive, tested for the coronavirus, one of whom is a friend of ours on honeymoon who has been, um, who was going to be split from his wife, you know, on honeymoon. He is going to be taken to a medical facility and she will have to remain on board. There's still a lot we don't know about this virus and the next few weeks will be crucial in determining whether a pandemic, a global epidemic, can be averted. It spread through droplets, face-to-face -face contact within a couple of metres of an infected person. The incubation period is up to 14 days. It now looks less likely that people spread the infection before they have symptoms. The virus causes a fever and cough. The majority have mild symptoms, but it can cause breathing difficulties and viral pneumonia as lung tissue becomes inflamed. Most of those who've died are elderly with underlying health problems, but not all. Dr. Li Wenliang, among the first to raise the alarm about the new virus, was just 34. He would have risked repeated infections at close quarters to patients. If a large amount of virus is coming in all at the same time, 
in the case of a healthcare worker working very closely with infected patients, it could be that the amount of virus in the body increases very, very rapidly before the immune system has a chance to deal with it. And so that could lead to rapid onset, severe disease. The World Health Organization has warned of a global shortage of face masks and other protective equipment, in part because people who don't need them are buying them. The world is facing severe disruption in the market for personal, for personal protective uh, equipment. Demand is up to 100 times higher than normal and prices are up to 20 times higher. A final evacuation flight of British nationals from Wuhan, like this one last week, is due to arrive on Sunday. Passengers will then be taken to a quarantine facility in Milton Keynes.